Uh, yes. Uh, uh, do we have a home on you uh, this Friday? Oh, yes, I think so. Uh, so you already post uh, the homework for uh, you? Oh. I think, yeah, I think I post the homework by, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I think it should be also on oh, campus. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll go find it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh So, uh Let's see. Oh, I think we Okay, I okay, okay. I Yeah, I guess I would just I like, do like homework like from now on more or less like every two every two weeks I like, do every two weeks. So um, yeah, maybe I forgot to mention that I there's homework. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Let me. Did I? Did I? Yeah. We start. Okay. Let me start the recording. So um. So we just talk. Up. Uh, okay. We just gave an example, basically. Uh. A. A bias con that we're pulling out a just toss the con like a thousand times to get a sequence and we look at the probability like just two particular case one is like the sequence that is basically typical that have like 600 head and 400 tails that of course we know that like the probability will be just two to minus n tricks because that one is typical right and then we also look at okay how about if the con when we toss it like uh, doesn't have like 600 head but we got 400 head let's say and then like we see that the probability will be equal to this it's equal to minus 2 to the n h x that's like what we got from typical sequences but then there's an extra term here plus the KL divergence between the basically the empirical distribution that's basically now instead of like I have like uh, forty percent or sorry sixty percent of them ahead, I have forty percent of them ahead. So I have the care divergence between the empirical distribution and the original distribution on the six point four. And of course I we know the care divergence is positive. So therefore the probability here Yeah. This is actually the KL itself. And this is yeah, this is KL. So what's no, no, what's no, 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 so let's say this is a distribution Px and another distribution Qx, let's say. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. So, okay, as I mentioned, like, one thing we can see is like, okay, because it's not a typical one, right, so we expect the probability is much smaller. It's actually exponentially smaller, right? So it's like exponentially. Uh, if an uh, extra exponential minus n KL divergence something, and this KL divergence in general, if the empirical distribution is not the same as this one, so in that case that that means that it's not typical, then this will be positive, right? So therefore, like this, as n goes to infinity, this will go to exponentially smaller. But another observation is that like it only depends on the empirical distribution, right? In here, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, in here, the px, so where is the kx in here, 0 0.6? No, the qx here, the px here is 0 0.4, 0 0.6, qx here is 0 0.6, 0 0.4. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. That's the original distribution, like 0 0.6, 0 0.4. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, ah. Uh, so, uh, and of course, this is obvious, right? In the sense, like, the probability of a sequence actually only depends on the empirical distribution. Empirical distribution meaning that, like, what fashion of 
outcomes you get, like what fashion of head you get, what fashion of tail you get. So let's say if I have 0.4 per 40% uh, of them are head, then I have one type. If I have 30% of them are head, and another type. So therefore, we can define a type class. It's basically like include all the sequences have the same empirical distribution. So you get the uh, the, the key idea here. So we, we can define a type class. Type class. The type class is basically just like uh, if I have a kind of a where yeah. There is no entropy on there. Where? There's entropy here. It is. Here, there is entropy. No, okay. I I I I here. Yeah, I don't oh. piece explore this. Oh. Just this this side. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes. So a, a type class, any type class is a think of any empirical distribution like Px. So a distribution of your outcome and then the type class will be um I would say a sequence A is belong to a type Let's say, oh, I, I guess it's better for me to, oh, it's okay, I guess it's fine. So this is a particular distribution, just remember this is a particular distribution, P here. So let's say this is the one that we just have like 0 0.4, 0 0.6, let's say. And then like, we say like a sequence is in this type, like T, P here. So if basically the empirical distribution of that sequence is equal to P. So more precisely, let me introduce the notation. Let's say n a wait a sec. Um actually I want to not not a here, like I say xn. I want to say so so an xn this one is in the type class P if okay, I didn't describe that yet, but let me define this these terms first. So this one here is the number of a in xn. So for example, this a can be head and tail, head or tail, in the previous example. So for example, like for this type here, that will be like. 400 head and 600 tail. So therefore, like, n head, let's say for this particular sequence extent here, is equal to 400, something like. Oh. Yeah, and n tail extend equal to 600. Mm -hmm. Simply like, sim simple, it's just a simple rotation. So to define this is like basically, for a particular outcome of x here, how many of how many of them this particular outcome A inside the sequence exam? Just mm -hmm. just count that. So what yes. What is T over there on that? T this this T or like? Yeah. T. Okay. So then like if we define a type class for a particular distribution P, mm -hmm. if um if basically this exam is in P if so of course what we want is say like N A actually it's very intuitive like. You want to have this empirical distribution is equal to the distribution, right? So therefore, for different outcome, let's say a, for example, head and tail, mm -hmm. the number of head here over the total length of that sequence, that is like in the last case, is a ten uh, a thousand. Mm -hmm. This will be equal to empirical distribution. Let's say p hat is a Point four, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this is like four hundred. Um, this is this need to be true for all outcome of X. Yeah. So what's the relation to? Yeah. What's the relation here? What in what is meaning? Oh, okay. This is just like this is inside this set. Oh. 
So this is a typecast where I say a sequence is inside the typecast if and only if it's satisfied this way. So, so this is basically just meaning that the uh, um, empirical empirical distribution of sequence x n is equal to p is is identical, right? So in the p we say like that's point four of them like is hat, like point six for them is like tail. And if we can't actually count that particular sequence they also like have like forty percent of them are hat, like sixty percent of tail, then that particular sequence will be in the type typecast. So it is very simple. So um very intuitive. And I'm also like from our earlier discussion here, every sequence in the same type class will be same probability, right? Same type. Because I, I all of them will have the same fashion of has, same fashion of tail and so on, right? Every sequence in the same type class just means that like they will have like the same number of has, same number of tails and so on, same same number of outcomes. And all of them will have same probability. Uh, every sequence in the same type class yes, uh, will have the same probability. Same probability. Yes. It's different to the tail on or head. Uh, they they will okay. Every sequence in the same type class will this we have same number of head and tails. Yes. Yeah, b because it's because of this condition, right? That's right. You will, and in general, uh, it can be some something else. It can be like floating a dice. Like tossing a dice. If a four dies, uh this condition will be saying that like mm. in the same type class, uh two sequences will have the same number of ones, same number of two, same number of three and so on. Mm -hmm. And so therefore like they will also have the same probability. Yeah. And um so let let's just so this this notation may be a little bit confusing. Maybe I just repeat a couple of times to make it a little bit to be more get you a little bit more familiar with that. Um, so and, and for the following discussion, I will just resolve Q as the actual distribution that that for example, like in our previous uh, example. It will be the distribution with like zero point six percent. I mean zero point six of head, zero point four of tail. That's the actual distribution. And um, p will be just the original distribution is p. Original distribution. No, uh, no, no. This, this is the original. Uh, yeah. What I mean, actual is basically the original distribution. Original distribution is Q. So let's see. I'll what just stick with the what I have in the side. Uh, th 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 it's just let's nice use Q here. Oh. Let's use Q here. I want to stick with the the notation in the, in my slides. So I like we, we get confused. So Q let's say Q is the original distribution because like we have many distributions now. Right? P will be like any type that we are going to talk about. Mm. Q will be the type class. Uh, the original distribution. Then, therefore, like TQ is actually the typical class. TQ is the class that that is actually typical. Eh? Q is the original distribution. Yeah. That when we say TQ is like every sequences will have the number. But of course, in these cases, will be exactly equal to right? when we we talk about typical sequences. We keep. Uh, Cover error margin here, like we we can allow the probability to be like two to the minus n h x plus epsilon, sorry minus epsilon up to like something like plus epsilon, right? Yeah. But for exactly in the tight cups Q, you see that like that probability is exactly equal to two over n h x something like that. Mm. So, but um, so therefore like everything in type. TQ is definitely dif uh, typical, basically. Um, so, uh, 
So and of course I, I can y something like xn as say xn is a particular sequence. I will denote uh, the pxn for convenience. Pxn will be the distribution, the empirical distribution of this xn here. What it means is that pxn is equal, to, for example, pxn a here is equal to n a x n over n, yeah, something like that. So then, of course, then therefore, like this is apparent that x n will be inside the type class p x n, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So um. So the type class of uh, p there's a lot of member. There are a lot of member of type class. Yes. Yes, uh, each type class has many different mm -hmm. sequences. So for example, like we have the previous example like T Q mm -hmm. let's say Q is the original distribution. We have the Q is a I guess it's point six one four, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Right? And then like we said like one of these sequences, this type class can be like I have like uh, 600 head here, followed by six, uh, 400 tail here, right? Mm. But I can also have another sequence, I say I have like 400 tail first, mm. and then 600 head, right? Okay. There are two different sequences, right? There are two different sequences, mm -hmm. but they are all, both of them are inside this type class, right? Oh, yeah. Because they have the same number of head and same number of tails. The order different. Yeah, the yeah, order, the order different. Ah, yeah. In this case, they are all typical. Mm -hmm. But we also look at example. For example, if I have a p have a distribution that like um is equal to point four when uh, or like p. Uh, uh, I y like px is equal to point four when x is equal to hat and then point six when x is equal to tail. Then look at this type class here, TP here. I'm four hundred hat and six hundred tail, right? Mm. Apparently this is not typical, right? Mm. Yeah. I I mean like the, if as if the original distribution it's a point four point uh point six point four mm. and this one is point four point six then I have four hundred head and then six hundred tail. This are not typical. Yeah, that's not typical. Yeah. But typical for P. Typical for P, but then that uh, you need to be careful, right? Uh it's true typical of P but but you think of that like, you have the source here. The source indeed does uh, say you have like sixty percent is biased in the way that mm -hmm. if could you give you like sixty percent of time like if you had right? Mm -hmm. yeah, of course not typical for Q. Yeah, it's not typical for Q. Mm. So um and uh let's give another example. Let's say if I have X here can take value of 1, 2, and 3. Outcome is 1, 2, and 3. And let's say xn is equal to 1, 1, 3, 2, 1. Let's say just like that. Then I, I can have like pxn here. pxn1 will be like, it's just equal to 3 over 5, right? This is the, using our previous notation, pxn is just the, um, empirical distribution of that sequence mm. okay. so I have like pxn2 is equal to what? 1 1 over 5 pxn A1. 1 over 5 yeah right. and uh, so yeah if I, I can 
talk about the tip, the type class. One over five. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, type class TPXN. Uh, so it will contain sequences as a one 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 two three one 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 three two and so on so forth one two three one one and so on right yeah this, this will contain all of them all sequences and actually how many of them do we have that will be just a combinatorial right mm -hmm. how many sequences that will have like something like five mm -hmm. factorial yeah three factorial one factorial one factorial that kind of stuff right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and um so in this particular case, uh, the size, of therefore the size of the type class, so as we mentioned, it's just like 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, is equal to 20. When is 3 in there? Uh, what? When is 3 in there? One, two, three. Yeah, because you have three, three of them. Yeah, yeah three, uh, this, this is the combinatorial things, right? If you have, if you, you have like um, a length and stuff, you have k class here. Like for example, if I have like, just say I have like, uh, I have uh, m one so many k. Uh, sorry, m one so many one. And then I have n two so many two, um, up to like I have n k so many k. Um, I want to see like how many different combinations do I have. Mm. Then this go back to something. Um, it will be equal to like n factorial over one factorial. Uh, sorry, uh, n one factorial over n two factorial, and so on up to n k factorial. Yes. No, no, we, 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 we have a we have a formula something like uh, three factorial uh, five minus three factorial. No, no, that one is not that case. That is like n pick two. That's pick two. You for that's basically the case when you have n of them. Yeah. You're just w going to pick two different classes. Yeah. One of them is one. Let's say in that case, it would be like just have two numbers like one and two here. And then you have n one of them are one, n two of them are two. Mm -hmm. Then that is basically you will get like n over m one factorial over n two factorial, right? But n two is also just equal to m minus m one, right? Yes. I think you're probably referring to this. Yeah. Right. That's just like n choose like m one, right? Yeah. But that's only when you have like two pieces. Yeah. This is like when you have more than like two pieces. Um, right. More yeah, because uh, you have also um, the outcome you can have here, your outcome 1, your outcome 2, outcome 3, right? Oh, yes. and, uh, and, and, and this is actually pretty easy to show because you think of it, uh, um, you have... Um, so what, why there is not a 2 factorial on there? No, there's an n2 factorial here. Yeah, M one for two and two for two. Mm -hmm. You don't have to because three one one. Yeah, three one one. So three factorial one word factorial one factorial. I have like three of them one way. Right? One yes. of them is two. One of them is three. So therefore one one. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, this like uh, you you can you can go back and just uh, try to argue yourself why is it? this is actually pretty s simple because uh, you have uh, think of like uh, what is n factorial? If you have n numbers, I like one up to n here. And you try to look for all the permutation, like what different orders here. For example, you count like how many different orders from one to n. Like you can have one to n, you have like n to one. You can have like one, or maybe I just took a three factorial. I can have like one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, 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 two, one
two phi one two one phi I'm oh, sorry phi one two phi two one so on then they give you like all these combination is phi factorials right mm. yeah that's right A and um so that that's really kind of all the permutation right so then when you have why is this equal to this over the of this because uh when you have this one is the same you are basically going to double count mm -hmm. right instead of like you have for example like in instead of originally you have five five number one two three four five let's say mm -hmm. now but if you look at it here two three is okay but let's say that four five you also count it as one that's one right because i let's say i i now let's say i i i, I just if I assume that uh, I, if I assume that like I list everything out like one two three four five, I list everything. Look at all the permutation like this. Then I have five factorial of them. Yes. Now, if I say like uh, I'm going to count four and five the same as one, mm -hmm. then that the total number will be the same as this one here, right? Yeah, and how how I'm going to when when I count that what is going on is like I will have this one two three four five for example like originally I have one two three four five and two three four one five and two three five one four all these will count as the same way. Right? Yeah, because like all of them now this all this is count as one. So I, I'm going to double count this one, 5 factorial. And um, how much I'm double count is basically I will double count by 3 factorial. Because the number of like uh, permutation, different orders of 1, 4, 5 here will be just 3 factorial, right? 3 factorial. Yeah, so 5 and 6 become 6. Yeah, because I can have like 1, 4, 5 here. I can have 4, 1, 5 here. I can have 4, yeah. 4, 5, 1 here. This will be 6 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, so, therefore, to address that, I can just divide that by, by three factorials, right? Yes, exactly. Um, and the same case if I have other cases, like if I have not just one of them, I have the other one is n2 and n3, and all of them I need to cut this count that to avoid the double count, so therefore I will divide by m1 factorial, n2 factorial, and so on. Would that mean the same with the original one? Original formula? This the same. This the same. Like, uh, your calculation with this. No, it's not. This is only two cases. That's As I mentioned, there's only two cases. Right? Only, it's not same one. This is under t t completely different situation, right? Mm -hmm. This only have two cases that you are have uh, n pieces. Mm -hmm. You are separated into two different parts, right? Yeah. You're pulling one part out, and then like, and you, when you pull it two parts out, then it's essentially the same as a. You are trying to, um, what should I say? It's only for two it, it will be the same as I have uh, n of them, and I look at like n of this one and two here. I might have m1 of them, uh, um, okay, let me repeat again. m1 of them are 1, and m2 of them are 2, and then m1 plus m2 is equal to total n. So I'm going to see like what kind of like different orders I can have, like 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, or like 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and so on and so forth. Oh, there's only two. Yeah, two. there's only like two. You mean only two. Yeah. One and two. In and there, yeah, this in general, more. yeah, I can have like more, more, I can have k of them. Uh -huh. So, so this n c choose n choose k is only a special case, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um. So, but uh, in general, like what we talk about, like let's say if I have a TP, 
I look at like how many different sequences I have, then therefore will be like m factorial over uh, n times p x1. So this is a number of uh, fraction that is like x1. And this one factorial m p x2 factorial and so on and so forth like up to n whatever up to like let's say if I have k class k different outcome times by n? Oh, because this is only this is a not counting the number of them this is a empirical distribution right uh -huh. this is normalized no, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but actually let's see Yeah, but actually this is turns out is quite kind of messy to use. I'll give a better bound later on. Actually this um I may jump forward, like later on we will show that like this is bounded by like two to the n HP and like two to the n HP over n plus one x factorial because uh, uh, to the power x yeah, because factorial is, m is very difficult to kind of manipulate. Mm -hmm. So we are going to show this, but but uh, please be patient. We will come back to this one here later on. So this is the actual bound we are going to use, but uh, yeah, we we won't really use this that much. So but before that, let's look at um. Uh, yes, this is uh, this is ECM. This is not exact, but this is sufficient for most of our discussion. Uh, we 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 are we are going to go for that later on. What don't worry about that. What? And why? Uh, don't worry about it because we'll go go. Yeah, it's just HP. Oh, but don't true. don't worry about that. As okay. I mentioned, uh, we will come back to this one later on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and, and uh, we already saw that earlier. But let's kind of like make it formal. Basically, if I have um, I have type class P, and let's say I have sequence in that type class P, and let's say Q is the true distribution here, the original distribution. Is Q original distribution? Then what is P? We call that. Mm, P, yeah, there's no name for that. You can say this is the class for the the, prob the empirical distribution for that xn here. Mm. But it's like the, the deep distribution appear to be like for that particular sequence, right? Mm. Particular sequence. And then like... Typical sequence for particular sequence. No, th that... Mm, And uh, and basically the probability of this sequence, this p x n, uh, will be just equal to two to minus n h p plus no, actually not. We saw that way right, earlier, right? Yeah, right. But uh. Let, let's let's show it. Uh, okay, we only show it that for a special case. So let let's show this to a mo for a more general case. So let's say I have Q. Q is the true distribution, right? So the probability of X n is basically will be something like uh, maybe I just ignore this. Maybe my notation here will just confuse you. It'll be just equal to qxi pull that like i equal to 1 to n, right? Because q is the true distribution, right? Mm. Yeah. 
and this will be equal to again we'll do something to to the log uh, log something uh, log ported i equal to one to n q x i and then of course I this log port I can write it as a uh, sum of log qxi then my qxi um, let's see xi what do you want to what I have, I have multiplication here, then I change in to addition. In here. Oh, because you have a um, typical Yeah, sequence. I have a sequence, right? Oh, yeah. I have XN, yeah. Mm. XN is a sequence, right? I want to find the probability of that sequence. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, okay, here is a bit tricky. What I'm going to do is I, here I sum over 1 to n, right? Because it's a sequence of length n. But I can group them together, right? In the sense, I, uh, here, for example, like if this is a, uh, a kind of binary sequence I can have like so many 1 and so many 0 and so on so I will just group them in a different way this sum I can change it to sum over A for the alphabet of X so this alphabet maybe can be 0 and 1 or head on tail and then okay I have that problem with my calibration again A X N log Q a do you agree with that like basically like here is the sum over one to n right sum over one to n um here instead like i'm i'm sum over the alphabet of x oh. and then like when i sum over the alphabet of x i i have like so many i need to check how how many times i need to sum up right for one for example for one i need to sum up like m one x n so many times because in the sequence there's so many 1, m1 extends so many 1, and for 2 I have n2 extends so many 2 and so on. So therefore like this sum will become this instead. And then I now... Yes, it's semi. Yes. But n a extend here, uh, I can... I know that like because it's in type P X N, right? Yeah. Or like in type. Mm. But in here A is uh, limited. Maybe it's only to zero point four and zero point six. How many zero point four in there? Um, only four bits or four hundred. How many zero point six is only six hundred? I mean that in here A is uh, limited only to only how? Yes. Yes, only the alphabet, like... Yeah. And also, like, we, we know that, like, because, let's say, XN is in the type class... XN in the type class P, so therefore, like, PA should be equal to n a x n over n, right? Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, this one I can write it as p a times n instead, right? Yeah. So then, therefore, like I have two to the min min. Oh, I put a minus here. Minus n sum over a in x. I put minus you inside again. No, no, I just, I put minus, just I put a minus inside also, PA, log QA, right, something like that. Then I pull it out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Then, um, then I can write, uh, this one I can write as a sum over A in X minus P log P, uh, maybe I should write PA log PA anyway. PA log PA 
minus just like what we did earlier minus p a q a right so this will be equal to that yeah so then the earlier term is actually just the entropy right so the first term is just the entropy so maybe i just write out anyway p a log p a plus a x p a log p a of q a so therefore like this will be just the entropy HP and this is will be the KL divergence P and Q Original, we have the KL in, inside the original one. This is original actually, and this is we got the KL also. No, this is not original. Is this original? This, this is not original. XN in TP, but P is not equal to Q. Oh, this is not original? Yeah. So, so why is the original? What? So where's the original one? Until original here. is Q. Until here. What, what, what you do? Uh, what uh, you mean? The original is like Q, eh? Q yeah. is the original. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The last, yeah. This is the original. This is the particle. Yes, a any kind of exam that does not need to be typical. Mm. Yes. So therefore, we have. We have this way, like, xn is basically. Mm. This is original. Wait, 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 wait. The xn is not original, but q is original, yes. But you look at the original probability, right? There's all like, that's the true probability, right? You need to look. xn itself mm. have an empirical distribution. Mm. For example, like, you, you can have. P can be like just as we say like upon six of them a head, like upon four of them a tail, this is the Q there. Mm -hmm. But you can have XN actually have four hundred head and six hundred tail, right? XN. Yeah, and then like XN will have like a P and uh, empirical distribution is like point four and point six, right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Just mean that the Yeah. Yeah, but but when you Talk about the probability, of course, uh, they, this is a true probability, right? Mm -hmm. You need to look at the true probability. Yeah, the true probability. And then this is a, uh, so uh, this is come from the original one and then become a particular from there. Yeah. Because the first one is this original one, but we put a particular. Uh, particular is here. Yeah. No, particular is P here. Yeah, yeah, P here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a particular mm. one. And then from from there, the Q also. The Q also here. There is Q. So this actually original, but inside A A is here a particular. So actually, this is Q is original, but inside it, not the original. But A is plural. No, okay, I, I'm totally confused what you're talking about. Like, A, A, A is the alphabet. You mean that uh, come from a particular? That, that's no A, whether it's come from particular or original, because A, they share the same, they did the same alphabet, right? You didn't change the alphabet, right? You're talking about like folding a dice or like you're kind of like uh, tossing a, t uh, a coin. Like, you toss a coin, it's all, always a head and tail, right? So A is always head and tail, right? Yeah, always the same it doesn't tail. it doesn't change right, whether you look at a different distribution, right? Mm -hmm. well, um, so 
so um, so any other question? Excuse me, that the first part from the uh, we we de we derive it from the original one in here, and then uh, uh, from the uh, in here we change this uh, become p. Let's see, this and p because uh, you want to know the. Mm. So you just insert insert this this value to there because your extent this is like what wait, wait 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 look at we are looking at again like we are asking what's the probability of getting a sequence yeah. that the sequence is not typical eh? yeah. um actually have an empirical distribution equal to this yeah, that's right. and uh, i'm not sure what is your question really so I mean that uh, you put this, you and you entry this one to this. So therefore, we find that in particular, we uh, we find the probability of the non non typical sequence. That's right. Is it right? No, I I okay. Can you can you what is your question again? I mean that uh, uh, from from. Uh, Formula you you use general equation here, and then but after that in the no 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 that's no general or no whatever this is like always we are doing the same thing. Yeah. We, we didn't change anything. We are looking at same sequence here. From here to here, the only thing is that you're something from one to n. So for each of so, let's say if look at this example here, you have like four hundred of head and then like six hundred of tail. If you look at the probability, you can go for each one of them, right? each 400 of them, right? Mm. Or you can group them together, right? So here, you or we are just basically group them together, right? You will, will put like 400 toge of them together. Mm. Because all 400 of them will have the same log QA, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's a log, they will be all the same with like basically Q A here, Q H is like point six. So all of them will be like same log Q log point six way. Right? You can either like for each of them that like you just come one by one or you can put them together. Right? This here we, we didn't do anything magical here. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, not original Q here. This is not original Q here. This is just a notation. Okay. What? What? Okay. What original Q is here? I don't know what you mean by original Q. The distribution Q here is the original distribution. Or like I should say, like that's the true distribution, right? Yeah. The distribution of that bias con is really point six point four, right? Mm -hmm. But for that particular sequence. You actually get like four hundred of head instead of six hundred of head, right? Yes, right. Um, that is reflected in here, right? That's four hundred head here. Here with that's uh, the key. We can put 0 0.4, we can put 0 0.5, we can put anything. That's right. It depends on your sequence, yeah. If your sequence, yes. If mm -hmm. your sequences have like uh, 0 0.5, so many head, then it will be 0 0.5, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that depends on your sequence. So we just want to look at that. For that particular sequence, what will be that probability, right? Yeah. And that probability will just depend on the entropy of the type. And the care divergence of the the type and um, the type and particle distribution yeah. with the original distribution. Yeah. Yeah. It's mean that because uh, we only have uh, for for original distribution we only have this one without this 
but because uh, we want to know the particular one, the P in here, so we find this. One. Actually, I, I think I made a mistake earlier when my discussion. Uh, I should be careful. Like this is actually in the original distribution is Q, right? Yeah. So if that time is actually typical, then the distribution is a two to minus NHQ here. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you can also show that this is always like uh, this is always bigger than this one. I think right? yes. you you will be able to show that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit confused because that should be as uh, original one, HP. Mm. That's, yeah, like that's HP is Q, it's really HQ. Uh, this is not HQ, actually. I think I made a mistake earlier. This is a uh, HP, yeah. Mm -hmm. But and there is original one. P is not our original one. So it means that we already know that for original it should be Q. Original is Q, yes. So it should be that one should be S Q there. If if okay, you use the same equation here. Mm -hmm. When you your type basically the sequence you consider is typical, mm -hmm. then P is just equal to Q, right? Yeah. Then you will just have two to the minus N H Q plus the care direction is Q Q, this will be gone, right? So this is mm -hmm. the two to the N H Q, yeah. yeah so I mean this equation holds like for whatever Sequences, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, so let's see. Now, with this, like, we can also talk us like, what's the probability? Probability that like, uh, getting something that is typical or not typical in type class Q, let's say. Uh, let's see, take cards here. Yeah. Actually, we, we do. Um, of course, uh, we can't know that. Like, what's the probability to get a type class Q will be. Oh no, this, this, this is. We just already look at that. We, it's not something. This, as I mentioned, uh, in that case, we just substitute, like, um, P equal to Q, then of course it's just 2 to n minus NHQ. Mm. But let's look at like, something else. Um, Okay, next thing we need to know first is uh, what's the number of type classes? So there will be many different types, right? Many different type classes. Um, but then it's still finite right? because uh, you think of like if your sequence length is n here, mm -hmm. the number of type classes it will be like different company. For example, like if I my uh, outcome is binary, it's just 0 and 1 here. Then uh, the number of type classes will be like, I can have like 0 of them is 0, and then 1 of them is, oh sorry, then in, in that case it's like n of them will be 1, right? Mm -hmm. Or like I can have like 1 of them is 0, like n minus, n minus 1 of them is 1, and so on and so forth until I have n of them is 0 and then I 0 of them and 1 and all of them will be different type classes, right? Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, the number of type classes is just equal to n minus 1, right? This is just equal to n minus, uh, sorry, n plus 1, right? Mm -hmm. um, and let me denote the, the set of just for convenience, set of all type classes as oh that's a script n script script p n of x here. This is a set of all type classes. Mm -hmm. 
So that means that just for this example here, the size here of this set here is just equal to m plus 1. M plus 1 is the number of type classes. So we we look at different types, right? So each sequences, according to the empirical distribution, can be a different type, right? Mm -hmm. So we say that like, uh, within the same type, every sequences will have the same number of like 0, same number of 1, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then a, a question we as we continue to our discussion, we, we need to find out is uh, how many different type classes do we have? So for the binary case when the outcome is just 0 and 1, as you can see, it's pretty simple. That would be like just m plus 1, so many different type classes. Because we can have like the first first type is like I have the number of 0 is just equal to 0. Second type is number of 0 is equal to 1. The third type is a number of zero is equal to two, and so on. That would be in total just m plus one, so many of them, mm. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So um. I mean that there is no zero in there. Just one. There's one, there's one, zero one. here. There's zero here. So therefore m plus one. Yeah. Zero. I mean that if we want to know n is uh, two, so zero, zero. 0, 1, 1, 1. That's right. And then 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then 1, yeah. There's 3, therefore. That's the example for 2. And n equal to 2. Oh, yeah. n equal to 2, then will be 3, yes. Yeah. Uh, what was the member of that? Zero, zero? Yeah, then you can have like... Zero, zero. No, actually, you ha yeah, you can have... Oh, oh, yeah, when you say zero, zero, you say to all the sequences, right? Yeah. We are not counting the number of sequences, we are counting the number of yeah. different types. Yeah, I mean the, 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 the members of that, zero, 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 one, and one, one. That's right. No, actually, no. The zero, zero, what do you mean by zero, zero? Uh, this is the number of zero and number of one. That the, the sequence. The no, sequence. no, that's what I'm saying. Like, we are not okay. If you want to use the sequence as a representative, that is okay. So you can say like zero, yeah. zero, zero, one, yeah. one, one. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. you can find. Yeah. yeah, this is a representative. But be careful. Like, this is uh, in this type class, you also have one zero. It's also in that yeah, class. One. Yes. So yeah. we have four. No, this is three of them. This is three of them. This n equal to you. Right? But why we cannot include this as a member one? No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like this two guys is in the same type, right? In the same type. Oh, oh, therefore that we cannot put that. Yeah, we we, 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 we do, uh, do everything. Every sequences in the same type mm -hmm. will have the same number of like one and same number of zeros, right? Oh, yeah. right. So we are just counting the number of type classes. And uh, here we use the notation p n x to denote the set of all the type classes. And um, therefore, like if you count the number of type classes, when x is binary, it's just equal to m plus one. Um, How about not binary? Yeah, that's we we need to find for when it's not binary. We can yeah, this is kind of complicated, but we. You can uh, still have a bound, it's pretty okay to use, it's just bounded by like n plus 1 to do x. x is the alphabet size of the of the outcome. So for example, like, yeah, when, when your binary is just 2, right? And if you have, um, I if you are a dice, or you're kind of folding a, di folding a dice, then x will be 6, right? So it will be bounded by m plus 1 to 6. The, the point is, like, um, that's quite big, but in terms of like what we are discussing here, it's actually not too big because it's just a polynomial, right? 
is n to alpha power something x here, like right? is the alphabet size typically is say much smaller than n, right? Mm -hmm. So it's say like, it's not because we look at all the other stuff we look at, like mostly it's say like two to n something. So it's an exponential of n where n is infinity. So this is way, way bigger than this guy here. Mm -hmm. Right? Because n is a is a n of even though it's going to be infinity for most of our discussion, but it's a n to the power of something finite only. So let's see how to show this is actually pretty simple. Um so Would that kind of be used for x uh, equal to two? No, you can use it as a bound, right? This is not exactly tight. Oh, this is just a bound, it's a bound by something. Can yeah. be used for x more than 2? No, no, no. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Like, it's a bound, it's still true by n equal to 2, right? n equal to 2 is still like, not n equal to 2, I'm sorry. Like, x equal to 2, mm -hmm. right? This is like, you have like, this is actually equal to n plus 1, right? But it's less than n plus 1 square, right? Yeah, that's so this is a bound, it's like still work. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. just a bound. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so mm, now to, to show that it's very simple actually it's like more or less the, what we did here like the same manner because like, if you think of like you have like x different outcome here the mm -hmm. for example you have like in the cases of floating a dice we look at the alphabets one two three four one, two, three, four, five, six, I say. Then you look at like uh for each type is asking a question that like how many um possibility of number of one and how many possibility of number two and so on, right? And number possible one here would be like just n plus one, right? Yes. Because it can be zero up to n. And number of two is also n plus one and so on. So therefore, like, for each of, for the total number of counting will be just the part of them will be like n plus 1 to the power, the size of the, of the so it therefore will be bounded by that. So it's, of course, it's, it's only a bound because I, there's some constraint here, right? Because I, if I have some particular, for example, like if I n is equal to uh, 100, then I say this is equal to 99, for one, then two, of course, I, I cannot be arbitrary from, like, actually, the only possible value for two would be just one, right? Mm -hmm. One or zero. So therefore, like, this this is just a bound. But 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 this is, it doesn't matter, because uh, this is a bound compared with, like, what we're going to discuss, the values we're going to discuss most of the time, two to the exponential n, uh, 2 to the power n is much more is smaller so therefore it's actually sufficient for our discussion so what what do you expect if not n plus 1 i mean like why uh, 1 should be n plus 1 Uh, but what what else will you suggest? Because I it can be zero, one, two, three, four, five up to n, right? Yes. To number, so that that would be like n plus one, so many of them, right? Assuming that one here, what uh, n n this would be n plus one. Mean that if you have a uh, uh, ten, maybe n ten. So yeah. we have uh, one eleven. Yeah, there are eleven possible values, right? For for the number of ones, it can be like. Two of them, one of them, two of them, and so many, right? Uh, uh, how, how, how do you uh, illustrate that? I, 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 uh, zero of them. No because I okay, we we are counting the number of type, right? So, um, the number of types are. Uh, we we say like what what would be a different type? Would be like, uh, 
they for the same type they will have the same number of like one same number of two same number of three and so on right and then like for the number of one like for the sequence have length n then and the so number of one that it can be is like only co one two three four and up to n way right? and yeah. that would be n plus one so many of them yeah that's right yes right that that's the for the number of one then, then when you look at the number of two what 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 is the possible value of the number of two again we can say okay the possible value of number of two can be like also co up to n of course I like, this this is a not a tight bound because I like, once we fix the number of one to be some values for example we fix the number of one to be let's say n then the only possible value of number of two will be, will be just zero right but we don't care it's just a bound so we still say okay the number of two will be um n plus one and of course it will be upper bound right it will be yeah. well, we are double counting like lots of stuff but it doesn't matter but we have the possibility number of one is zero yeah yeah sure sure yeah number of one is still yeah never appear one on there yeah 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 so we're just counting the number of types. So different types or like a sequence in the same type will be just have the same number of one, same number of two and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So therefore we look at like look at for a bound for the number of types here. Yeah. Right? If we just look at the possible values of the number of one will be just zero up to n, so that will be n plus one, so many of them. And, and uh, yeah, it, it, of course, uh, your one can be zero, but it doesn't. I don't know. It's not relevant to what we are discussing here. Mm. Where we are discussing like what's the counting the number of types here. Okay. Yeah. Even it's not possible. Yeah, it's still impossible. Yes, it's impossible. I mean, that in that it's impossible. No, it's not impossible. Like it's all it's okay. Then the not not likely is different from impossible, right? Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, again, uh, we are counting the number of types. We don't care whether that type is possible or not possible yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just counting number of types. Um, and the conclusion, again, is like the number of type is bounded by like 1 plus n to the power x. Yeah. So it's like relatively small. Yeah, that's right. So now. Now finally, we, we can talk about what we just say that TP, we said that like for a particular type, we say that how many sequences, we say this one exactly is equal to n factorial over like uh, m p one factorial, so on and so forth, like m p uh, maybe k factorial, so on. But this is very difficult to use. So in the instead, we look into the bound, let's say TP, the number of sequences is bounded by two to n h p and you write this before. yes, but we didn't show that because we we didn't have enough tools to show that, but now we can show this. So basically, if we ask, say, okay. Just just for this, uh, I think, wait, let's see. Just for this uh, upper bound here, we can ask uh, what is the probability to be in type class uh, P. So the probability will be bounded by One, okay. Here uh, I may confuse you a little bit, but uh, I assume the distribution. I assume okay. I assume p equal to q here. In particular, I use the p equal to q or q equal to p here, mm -hmm. just for for this particular case here. Then the probability. 
un, under this case, I w uh, that the probability in this type class P here will be sum over all the sequences in this type class and the probability that uh, I use a notation for that like to show this is the probability that sequence exam uh, occur under the distribution like P here and uh, and we know that like this one is actually because p is equal to q this probability we know it already this is just equal to 2 to minus nhp mm. yeah so and therefore it's like sum over x and tp is less than equal to 1 and then of course like this i can it's irrelevant to x and here i can put it out here so it's 2 to minus nhp this sum over all the sequences of in TP, this is just equal to the size of the uh, huh? any question? Like this because this put it out is just equal to one sum over X N T P, right? Then this is basically just counting the number of sequences in T P, right? But it's always a, a, a constant for that. And this, this is a constant in terms of exam, right? And always constant. And you get this is does not depends on exam, so I can pull it out. Uh, so I have that. So therefore, I have I have this basically this, right? TP. Then I move this term on the other side. I have TP is bounded by two to the NHP. So then I, for the other bound, so let's consider like, this is like, we're only considering the sequences in type P, right? Now let's consider the sequences in all the types. So the probability that, so let's consider all the types, like P, all the type P, N, X, let's say, for all types, we sum over the probability of all types. This is the probability that I pull out a sequence or like that belongs to that particular type. And of course, I this include all the probability, right? So therefore, it's equal to 1 here. Now, I can, let's see. All, all the types. Yeah, all the types. So now, I, I, I can find the maximum to span this by the maximum of all the type, right? So why should we same with one <coughs> over there? Huh? Should be same with one. Yeah, it should be equal to one because I'm counting all the probability, right? All, so all probability. Yeah, because I, I'm. This is the probability that pull our sequence belong to type P hat, oh. and then I, I I'm counting all the possibility here, okay. right? And all if you are belong to one type, you cannot belong to another type. So this is uh, exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. So you sum up all the probabilities, which should be just equal to one, right? Mm -hmm. So now then, I can bound this. Uh, this one of them will be largest, right? Mm -hmm. I just bound it by the largest one. Let's say I maximize over this, right? This this always because I can pick one that is largest among the other p there. So, but then if I do that, again, like this will be, this value will be independent of this sum here, right? Mm -hmm. Then I can pull this out is equal to maximum p tilde probability p times this. So what you put in here? More than? Less than. Yeah, yeah, less than equal. Yeah. Why you put that? Yeah, of course, I. This is a basically val different different piece. You have different values, right? This is a function of p hat here, right? Yes, that's right. Then I just say among all these p hat, I pick the one that's maximum. Yes. Of course, this will be like larger than this one, right? So this this of course this will be a 
this will be, uh, I mean, this guy will be a bound for this one, right? You mean that uh, this guy will be, this guy, I mean that this guy will be more than this guy? Yeah, of course, this will be bigger than this, right? So, but uh, this is will be not bigger than more than one. This will be not bigger than one. Why? Why? <laughs> more cannot be. Why? Yeah, because uh, this is um, uh, no, 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 no. This, this, okay. You can have probability like zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, zero point four. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now I pick this one point four as the maximum. I s I do it two four times. Mm -hmm. One point four plus point four plus point four plus point four. Of course, I can be bigger than one. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah so now, um, but then I this is a constant with respect to this guy here. Then I can pull it out. Then this sum now is become just something like uh, the number of like types, right? So we already described that the number of types is bounded by something, right? It's bounded by uh, one plus n to the x. So therefore, this is bounded by this guy here. And for this guy, we're just looking at like what's the probability that getting the type. Uh, that has the oh, oh, oh there was the one yeah the probability of getting a particular type that is most probable and of course the type that is most probable is just the typical one right mm -hmm. and we know that the probability th for the typical one is just equal to uh, just equal to two to the minus n h p. For here, I assume that I, I again I assume p equal to q here. So it's equal to two to the minus n h three for that particular sequence, but I have like t p so many sequences, right? Yeah. So then I we, we now we, we again I we just put the terms I on the other side we have like two to n on the other side and we, we have the lower bound here. Yeah. So uh yeah, I guess I just stop stop here and then I will uh we'll continue next time. So um, yeah, again, like we have homework due like this Friday. So uh, be sure to like submit it on time. <laughs>